Hi. In this talk, I present the non-existing name server attack or the NXNS attack, recursive DNS inefficiencies and vulnerabilities. It's a joint work of Yuta Afek, Anad Bremner Bar, and Lior Shafir. We'll have a quick overview of some elements of the DNS which are critical for the attack. We'll see some variations of the attack, discuss some mitigation options, go over a responsible disclosure procedure we followed, and concluding remark. Attack itself received considerable amount of attention from the media, including ZDNet, Wired, Fox News, and many other news media agencies. We tested the attack on the following DNS implementations. All of them have been found to be vulnerable. And on the following DNS service providers, again, the following has been found vulnerable. As you know, without the DNS, the, the internet is useless. When the DNS is under a massive attack and doesn't function, the affected areas cannot access, clients of the affected area cannot access their shopping, their online email, their uh, chat, Zoom, nothing is available. This page is what you'll get for any resource you try to reach on the internet. The Veni system, envisioned in 1987 by Paul Mocopetris, consists of more than 10 million servers. Two major types, the authoritative servers, arranged in a hierarchical structure, and recursive resolver mediating between clients and the authoritative servers. When a client wishes to find the IP address of cs.ucla.edu, for example, it accesses its associated recursive resolver with an empty cache to recursive resolver as the root, what's the IP address of cs.ucla.edu, which responds, I'm not authoritative for this name, for this domain name, you may ask .edu, it may get you closer to the answer. .edu responds similarly, I'm not authoritative for ucla.edu, but you should ask the name server at ucla.edu. Asking this name server, which is responsible for all resources at UCLA, you get a response with the required IP address, and you can now access the required resource. We see three packet exchanges for one resolution request. The system has several requirements. The major ones are high availability. When it's not available, the affected parts cannot reach resources on the internet. And quick response time, because any delay is added to the latency of reaching resources on the internet. Of course, high efficiency and making sure the responses are authentic. The high availability and the quick response time are the key drivers for our attack. High availability means that if a name server is not reachable, you must find alternative ways because now you cannot reach any resource at, for example, ucla.edu. Therefore, all authoritative name servers are required to keep multiple copies of their zone files on different authoritative servers. Here, UCLA kept four copies of four different authoritative name servers. When you now get a response, a response from the higher level, you may ask any of the following name servers to, for a resource at ucla.edu. And this is a referral response. So when you access and the first one doesn't respond, after a time you ask the next one, after another time or the one after, until you get a response. Similarly, at the higher levels of the hierarchy. The issue is that now the recursive resolver has to find out the IP address of those name servers which are given by their domain names. Let's take a closer look. Here is the referral response. And here the name server we ask is .edu and the response is a .net. Therefore, no IP address may be provided by the higher level, calling them glue records. No glue records are allowed. And the recursive resolver must translate and figure out their IP addresses by itself. It issues immediately at once request resolutions for all the name server names in the referral response in order for high availability to have all the name servers available as soon as possible and to be able to test the response time, figure out which one is the fastest. And you get as a response more referral responses and more packets this time with the IP addresses because .NET is within .NET. 
when Lior tried to reach www.microsoft.com on an empty cache for from a recursive resolver he installed, he noticed 54 requests for 126 packets, comparing with the three packets that we saw in the beginning of the talk. And this provides us the basics for our attack, and here is the main building block of the attack. We will attack .NET, top-level domain assortive name server, and the attacker must have two parts. He has a bot, a client to issue requests, and an attacker.com assortative name server. The attacker now issues a request bypassing the cache by a random string, and it gets to the attacker.com, which now issues a referral response, and it packs the maximum number of possible name server names with .NET and suffix, that target, to be resolved by the recursive resolver all at once. The recursive resolver actually issues 270 because it has to resolve both the IP version 4 and the IP version 6 of each the name server. And each request has a response, so it has to generate packets, so it costs them twice as much, and the responses are too big to fit into the UDP packet, are therefore taking a TCP, which introduces another factor six in the number of packets on the attacker, on the victim. Dividing by two packets of the attacker, and you get an amplification factor of 1620. With a huge botnet, like in the Mirai attack, which used a million bots, we get an extremely powerful attack on the top-level domain target, and also the recursive resolver is run with a lot of packets. Of course, you can divide the work by multiple recursive resolvers. Here, the attack, the victim is .com. Other versions, you may attack any second-level domain of your choice. This time, we are trying to attack the name server QCLA.edu. Here, the attacker will issue a referral response with 37 fake names all at ucla.edu, and the authoritative will res resolve all of them at once, actually twice as much, 74 of them, and the resulting amplification factor is now 74, no TCP. Again, with an extremely large botnet, and you got an extremely powerful attack on any second level domain of your choice. Recursive resolver again is swamped. You may divide the work on multiple recursive resolver or concentrate the attack on one recursive resolver with multiple authoritative servers. And here, the last variation of our attack with double amplification factor by the attacker first attacking itself. And then it has now the credit to issue 74 referral responses, each with 135 fake top-level domains. The target now is the root servers. They will have to resolve those top-level domains. 20,000 resolution just for this one request, and the amplification factor is 3,200. And the dot root is one with a huge amount of packets. Of course, if you use a large botnet, much larger. To acquire an assortive name server is very easy. It costs you one dollar and very few minutes to associate it with any name server on the internet. We tested the attack on several DNS providers and those are the different amplification factors we noticed. Mitigation. We suggest to mitigate it by not resolving all the name server names at once, but only K or one of them at each, for each request. Also, don't allow so many name server names in a referral response. We see that 99% of referral response have less than seven name server names in them. If you see a lot of non-existing name server responses at the recursive resolver, you know there is such an attack because such responses are possible either if there is a misconfiguration or in the attack. You can also use DNSSEC to minimize the number of non-existing requests from the recursive resolvers. And you may enforce going downward only in the DNS hierarchy to further restrict the attack. Max fetch K, for example, when we use it for each request, we resolve one name for the four names of UCLA. 
one more request, one more name resolved, and so forth, until all four are resolved. The fifth one, there is nothing to resolve, and now you can test which one is the fastest. Max Fetch K took down the amplification factor considerably, and we didn't see any effect on the latency. They are the same for with and without the Max 1 Fetch. We've issued a responsible disclosure procedure. The following companies have joined the procedure, 90 days in bank one till May 19. One company, Cloudflare, promised us a bug bounty. Several CVEs have been issued, and a security advisor and critical patch update. In conclusion, if you remember the Mirai attack in 2016 took out several resources on the internet for many residents in the US, this attack is almost 1,000 times more powerful. This is very worrisome. Could there be such a fatal error in the internet? Is there another such problem? Should we use formal automatic verification method to verify the DNS and BGP and other protocols which are critical for internet operation. We saw a trade-off between availability and response time and the introduced vulnerability, which those were the sources for the vulnerability. And one may consider redesigning the DNA system for more robust and highly available system without such flaws. Thank you very much for your attention. You may find more details about our project at this link and more details about us. Thank you very much.